David DeRoche is professor at the National Defence University, joins us here in the studio. Great to have you with us. We just saw the, the Iranian foreign minister addressing the UN. We're now hearing that there's going to be restrictions placed by the US on his delegation in New York. That, with the other sanctions that have recently just been placed on Iran, what sort of impact are they going to have? Minimal. Um, these are sort of de minimis actions that uh, the government can take to show they're doing things. Mm. Um, I think that when you start with the economic sanctions, those are constantly being uh, identified, sanctionable targets, and are being announced on an almost daily basis by the U.S. government. So the fact that they're being publicized a little bit more, I think, is is the Biden administration trying to show people and try to show Israel's leadership that they are taking an active role. The restrictions on the Iranian foreign minister um, refer to his uh, ability to wander around New York right. when he's there for U.N. business. Um, there is uh, a case to be made. There have been instances where he was speaking to reporters, threatening them and their family uh, in New York, uh, saying, you know, you're trembling, you should be trembling, I know you have family. Uh, but generally, this is viewed as sort of petty. Uh, there have been other delegations that have been engaged in active espionage. Uh, I think this is more just trying to show that we're doing something right. short of war. Absolutely, because we're still waiting to see what Israel's going to do. It's vowed to respond. Mm -hmm. It's held numerous war cabinet meetings to try and decide on that response. What do you think it's going to choose? What sort of line of action is it going to choose? Well, there's, there's several. Uh, I think it does have to respond. Mm. I think that Israel cannot uh, allow an attack of this magnitude, which I, I would argue is disproportionate, uh, to, to be unchallenged. It, this can't become a normal thing for Israel. Any Israeli politician who agrees to that won't have a future in Israeli politics. So um, I think that what they will try to do is identify a target that is closely identified with the Revolutionary Guard or with the religious regime that will inflict maximum embarrassment and damage, but is related somehow to this. This is very hard, but it could possibly be a drone factory or a missile factory. Uh, the uh, factory at Badr Air Base in Isfahan would be a good target, but it's very far inland, mm -hmm. hard to strike. Uh, and then maybe uh, some of the economic interests that the Revolutionary Guard increasingly controls. They control, by some estimates, as much as 45% of the Iranian economy. So if they could find a business that is known to be owned by the Revolutionary Guard that doesn't do a good job uh, and target that, that would probably not give the solidification of the Iranian populace behind the regime effect that Israel's also trying to avoid. It's very tricky. It's very tricky. So do you think Israel will be able to respond in a way that will not further escalate, will not warrant a response from Iran and further escalation? Well, we're, we're talking about pride here. Mm. So rationality and the things that uh, your viewers engage in, that's, that's not on the table. So I, I cannot predict what's going on. I can predict that when Israel does respond, they will say this is a discreet, proportionate event, and it's up for Iran to, as to how they take that. In the past, um, they have been able to, uh, you know, they've suffered some embarrassment and have been able to absorb that, you know, by making a promise to respond at some future time. But, uh, you know, when you, when you get pride involved, you get irrationality. And mm -hmm. that's when analysts like me just enter into the dark ages, unfortunately. So it's interesting, another point of this is that we've got the US and Israel holding meetings on the Rafa ground invasion. Yes. The US has been very clear that it does not support a ground invasion of Rafa until perhaps recently. Do you sense a, a change in tone? And is that connected to Israel holding off on escalating the situation yeah. with Iran? Yeah, uh, look, Prior to the Iranian attack on Israel, Israel was boxed in in international opinion. Uh, the narrative was Israel and civilian casualties mm. and suffering in Gaza. Now the narrative in the West, at least, has shifted to Israel under siege by Iran. Uh, Iran, in effect, has pushed the suffering of Gaza mm. off the table in most of the West, and it's rehabilitated Israel uh, among people in the West and in the United States who are at the verge of calling for a halt on it. So I think it's a very real possibility that, as a direct result of this Iranian action, the United States will say, okay, we'll hold, you know, Israel will say, we'll hold back on that, but we have to achieve our security goals in Gaza. And those security goals can't be achieved without a military occupation of Rafah for some period of time. David Arosh, very good to speak to you. Thanks very much for taking the time to join us here. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.